Hello, in this video I will talk about the traceroute program implemented on Cisco routers. Traceroute is a program which is used to identify the path through which packets will flow from the source to the destination. Identifying the path we means identify the IP address of routers or intermediate routers between the source network and destination network. Assume I am in router R1 and I would like to know the path from R1 to R4. So the path for that will be given by a trace route program. From here, I will trace route to the IP address of the serial interface on router R4 or the loopback interface on router R4. The output of the uh, execution of trace route will provide me with IP addresses of all intermediate routers, of course, the incoming or ingoing uh, interface, or in other words, ingress interface on router R2, R3, and R4. So I am in router R1. I would like to know the path followed by my ICMP packets or packets actually to reach the, the, the destination, the target uh, destination, uh, which is here simulated as a loopback interface zero. Normally the uh, IP address of uh, intermediate routers that I should see should be the uh, IP address assigned to the ingress interface from my router site. Uh, I can give you, I can show you a demo I am in router R1 and from R1 let me just reset the terminal then I will trace route to 172.31.100.100 so here it gives the IP address of intermediate routers between R1 and R4 uh, intermediate router IP address 192.168.0.2 so this is the IP address of this interface on R2 and uh, IP address 192.168.1.2, which is IP address of this interface on R3, and IP address 192.168.3.1, which is the serial IP address on router R4. Of course, since the loopback interface is on R4, no need to show also the IP address destination IP address 172.31.100.100. But if the IP address will be a host, physical host, then it will be uh, shown in the list, in the output list. So as you see here, there are three probes generated by the trace route: the first one, the second one, and the third one. The probes actually mention or specify the round trip time between the source or the initiator of the trace route and each intermediate node between it and the destination or the target. For example, between R1 and the, the IP address, this IP address, which is R2. Uh, the round trip time is 24 milliseconds, first time, the first time the probe was sent, the second time it was 16 milliseconds, and the third time it was a 20 millisecond. We can also the round trip time between R1 and R3. So there are three probes which are exchanged. The first time the probe was sent, the round trip time was 76 or 56 milliseconds, the second time it was 32 milliseconds, and the third time it was 40 milliseconds. Between R1 and R4, where the final target is uh, connected, the first round trip time mentioned 76 milliseconds. The second probe fails to show the round trip time, and the third probe shows 60 millisecond round trip time. So we see that as much as we as we are we go far from the source, the round trip time is increasing, is increasing in terms of values or magnitude. Uh, this is quite interesting. Also, the default behavior of traceroute is to send three probes. So for each intermediate node, three probes are exchanged between the traceroute initiator and that node. Uh, now, with, in Cisco routers, you can use the extended traceroute as well. So I'm going to clear or reset the terminal. Now, how to call this? It's like extended ping. So from the privileged exec mode, you have to run it. You have to type the command and then press enter. It will ask you which protocol you want to use, whether IP or IP version 6. So in our case, we're using IPv4. The target IP address, I will put the IP address of loopback interface on router R4. So it will be 172.31.100.100. The source IP address, so I will put the uh, IP address of the source interface, let's say 
192.168.0.1. Uh, numeric display now, I prefer to see display numbers. Timeout in seconds. So timeout is just a time window given to, uh, to a reply for a particular request. If within that time frame, no reply is received, the uh, request will timeout. So we can change the timeout from 3 seconds to 2 seconds, for example. The probe count, as we say, the default number of probes generated by Tracer is 2. So we can change it, for example, to 6. Let's see what happens with 6. So it gives a better view concerning in regarding the round trip time between the source and intermediate node. The maximum time to leave, 1, we can make a different value if you want to skip the first node, for example, we can make it minimum value equal to 2, or we can leave it to 1. So if I leave it to 1 here, I can see the very first hope between me and the destination. Now, if I change the value to 2, so I'm going to skip the first router, but I will see the second router between me and the destination. So in any case, you can play on the value of TTL, you can make it minimum, which is equal to 1, or change the minimum to 2. Now, for maximum, you can leave it to 30 in case you believe that between you and the destination network there are, there are less than 30 hops or routers. Now, in case where you believe that between the source network and destination network you have more than 30 routers, this is why that's what we refer as hops, so you can increase this number. But generally, it's very rare to find such a thing actually between source network, destination network, more than 30 routers. So let's keep the default. The port number here, 30,434. Actually, the way Traceroute is implemented on Cisco routers follows closely the way it's implemented on Unix platform, or Linux, of course. And it is different from the way Traceroute is implemented on Microsoft, Windows, Microsoft platform. There is a difference here. So, what I can say, I'm not going to go into describing exactly how Traceroute protocol works, but if you believe you have a process on the destination router, for example, or destination host, it might be a computer, and that process is using this port 33434. If you believe that there is such a process, UDP process, running and listening on this port, you can change the value to a different one. Make sure that the value that you put here, for example, 40123, this port number is not used by any UDP process running on the destination host. So you, we can change the value of the port number to 40,123 because what happens on the traceroute implementation on Cisco IOS, UDP datagram, UDP datagram is encapsulated inside the ICP, the ICMP packet. And we know that UDP datagram is a transport layer protocol. So in the header, you will find the source port number and the destination port number. So here, this will be the destination port 40,123 that will be inserted in the header of, of UDP datagram, which is encapsulated inside the ICMP packet. When that UDP datagram will reach the destination, in the case there is no process listening on this port, so the destination will return ICMP packet port unreachable. Once this type of ICMP packet is received by the source, then the source knows that it reached the destination and that it can stop the process, the whole trace route process. But as long as the source does not receive such type of ICMP packet port unreachable, uh, the, uh, the process, the trace route process will keep on uh, increasing the TTL value and sending more probes towards the target. So in our case, we change the value to this, and then we can choose between lose, strict, record, timestamp, variables. For example, I'm not going to choose any one, except that I will, I will press enter, then I see the IP address of intermediate nodes between the source router, let's say here, R1, and R4. Of course, you can execute trace route from host, from computer, from physical computer, but just for the sake of example, I'm just relying on routers in this uh, uh, demo. So here we can say we have three routers between R1 and R4. 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, sorry, and 3, 1. So there are three routers and these are the six props. So there are six props which are exchanged. And here we see the round trip time between the router and each intermediate 
device. So we see how much time elapses when between uh, the source router and each intermediate device. Well, it can provide us with a quite interesting figure in terms of round trip time magnitude. Now I have achieved my first part of trace route. What about now if I want to know exactly what is the path using trace route? I would like to know the path followed by uh, from the from the destination to the source. Trace route, as we said, it gives you the IP address of intermediate routers between the source to the destination. Now I'd like to know the IP address of intermediate routers between the destination and the source. So we reverse. It's like the other way around. Well, can we do that? Yes. Go back again. I will reset my terminal. I write the command the trace route. IP. The target will be 172.31.100.100. Source IP address will be 192.168.0.1. This means the IP address of the serial interface on router R1. And I press enter. Numeric display. Yes, of course. Numeric display. Yeah, I display everything will be displayed in numeric format. Time out in second, I keep the default value. The prop count keep the default value. Minimum time to leave keep the minimum value. Maximum time to leave the same. Port number same. But here, if I want to know the path in the other side from the other way, I type record. And then number of hops, let's say nine. Press enter and see what happens here. So if you read it from if you read this from uh, the uh, other side, it will be from the bottom of the list here, 192.168.3.2. This is the first router from the target to the destination, to the source. So the first IP address is 192.168.3.2. Second IP address is 192.168.1.1. Is this true? Yes, it is. And the third IP address is 192.168.0.1. Yeah, it is. So it gives you the path from the destination to the source in the other way, way around. So uh, it's uh, it's a very interesting sometimes to know what is the reverse path followed by the reply packets from the target to your computer or to your router. This is the end of the presentation. This is Hakim Adish. Thank you.